you see Rihanna become a billionaire. You see Kylie Jenner become a billionaire. Mr. Beast turned down a billion dollars. You use your fame to start businesses. Gary Vee, Mark Cuban, and Kevin O'Leary. Why are these guys creating so much content? Because they're smart. They know this is where you go. All right, we're back with the boys, Blake and Justin. And they wanted to know how the heck I started another new business. Yeah, yeah. Step by step. Yeah, right under our noses. We didn't even know it was happening. Right. Yeah, how do you do that? Man, that's just straight <laughs> to the point. <laughs> um, the one thing I'll say, and I want to talk about from A to Z, from the right. conception of an idea all the way to monetization, mm -hmm. launching it. Because that's currently, right now, filming this. We just launched yesterday, and it's already a six-figure business. Mm. So to think that, right? Crazy. Like, uh, from I started working on the business as far as like, I've had the idea for years. Let me, and I'll go into that detail. But I started working on it and said, I'm going to start this and to go to six figures in a month mm. is pretty fast. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Most of the folks out there are just scrambling. They'd give anything to have a six figure business, even if it took them five years to build it. Right. So, uh, I mean, obviously you've worked a lot in the background to get to the point where you can spin up a six figure business in right. a month. But with that, like what was, obviously the idea is important. The idea behind, well, do you want to explain the idea yeah, behind yeah, Content so, okay. Empire? So mm -hmm. the, yeah, this new business is called Content Empire. For those interested, you can go to contentempire.io. And um, essentially, we are teaching entrepreneurs how to use social media, right? Not only how to use it, but how to like grow a following on social media so that you can impact people and so that you can get more exposure for your business and make more money. Because I just believe as an entrepreneur that social media is king and it's going to continue to be king. Mm. And if you're not doing it, your competitor is and they're taking your cookies. Yeah. That's all it comes down to. And so my belief is this industry of content, I'll call it, is going to explode. The demand for editors, producers, videographers, you know, audio people. It, that's going to be an industry like, you know, I, I know people years ago were saying, yeah, you got to get into tech and, and coding and like all that. Like, that's important, too. Right. But I believe this is going to be like the fastest growing industry in the world. Yeah. I feel like it can't not be with what you're seeing now with the latest youngest billionaires. Right. All being not folks with like massively technological advanced, technologically advanced ideas or anything, but they've cultivated an audience. And now you see like hi, Mr. Beast making a burger joint. Well, he also just turned down a billion dollar offer. Yeah. yeah. At 24 years old. It's crazy. I heard that, dude. I mean, Mr. Beast, he, he wants to be like the richest man in the world. Yeah. And he knows the way he's going to get there is through content. Yep. He's not going to get there because he came up with Apple. Right. <laughs> right. He's going to get there because he has the most attention. Well, and I think he was really smart to turn down that billion dollar offer. At 24, dude? Yeah. Imagine turning down a billion dollars. <laughs> like, I... You know, <laughs> in sports, you see these young guys signing these huge deals. Like I saw, um, who just signed a fat deal recently? Uh, it was crazy. It was like one of the largest deals ever. I can't even remember. Baseball guy. You know, this kid had like a year in the league, and then he signed like a $200 million deal. Sheesh. I think it was Wander Franco was last year. Mm. And then this year, there was another guy. Nonetheless, like I, I would be like, man, <laughs> that guy got like $300 million. Like that's nuts. Mr. Beast over here, like, nah, Bill, no chance. No, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. But with his skill set and what he's already built, give it a couple of years, a $10 billion offer is probably going to be low for yeah, what he he's doing. He won't take it. Yeah, right? no way. Yeah. So with that, obviously, there's demand for it. So working backwards, well, like, that's a big part of your methodology for everything. Well, and let me say this, too, before I get into why I chose this. Yeah, yeah. Um, with content. Right. There are two types of people, right? There are the people like Mr. Beast who are not business people, at least mm -hmm. when they started, right? He was through and through a content creator. He right. wanted to make videos. That's his passion. That's cool. And then, you know, guys like him figure out how to build businesses beyond the content. Right. Then there's guys like me who started out in business. I made millions of dollars in business before I ever started making videos. Mm -hmm. And then I realized like, oh, making content is actually really smart. 
not only for business, but for helping people and being known and everything else. I see what Mr. Beast does. I see what Kylie Jenner does. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. And I said, that's the way to grow your business way bigger. Yeah. And so two and a half years ago, I do it. And the results were crazy, right? And what's wild about that is there's the art and then there's the science. And the business mind usually focuses on the science. Mm -hmm. When I've spoken to you as an artist, a musician, that's always coming to the plate of saying, man, I, I really love songwriting. I love making this music. And I think it can help people. It has helped people. Help me to cultivate this into a business. And you always have the science mind of, hey, where's the demand? Like, where's the demand? Where's your audience? Where's the money? And it's awesome to see how you, one way, coming from the science of business and Mr. Beast coming from the art of being a videographer, have both kind of gotten... Met, met in the middle. Yeah, you meet in the middle. Like, he had to learn business. Mm -hmm. You've had to learn the art of content. And now what I see, um, what I see this new business as is, for the first time in my experience, calling the social media game something other than random success and art and virality, where I think you've got a method from just being a, around your machine that is pretty dang hard to argue against in terms of volume, kind of the Hermosi mindset, like volume and consistency and some of the other tactics that you're yeah. teaching people. Mm -hmm. Right. That can make people like me that are artists really buy in, where it's like, oh, okay, this isn't just a viral shot in the dark. Yeah. Well, and I'll tell you, I, I agree. Like the people who can merge both yeah. are the big winners of everything, right? Because you'll have entrepreneurs who just say, I'm going to continue on my business and they're going to do what they do. Like they can become millionaires. There are some who can be completely unknown and become billionaires, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to see the artist who they're always getting screwed by their record labels. Right. And like, they just want to create. Yeah, they just want like, to create. That's how I that's, feel. That's cool. They can also become millionaires, whatever. Yeah. But then when you see both happen, you see Rihanna become a billionaire. Yep. You see Kylie Jenner become a billionaire. Mr. Beast turned down a billion dollars. The Rock start not like he made a lot of money in wrestling and Hollywood, right. but he made real money starting a business. Big time. Conor McGregor. The list goes on and on, right? You use your fame to start businesses mm -hmm. or you're really good at business and you go and get famous. Get famous, yeah. Right? Like, uh, you know, and you see it with like all of these celebrity entrepreneurs like mm -hmm. a Gary Vee, like uh, a Mark Cuban, a Kevin O'Leary. Why are these guys creating so much content? Because they're smart. They know mm -hmm. this is where you go. Alex Hormozzi, who just spoke at my event, same deal. It's funny because the day before I launched Content Empire, he made a video essentially promoting Content Empire, even wow. though it wasn't for Content Empire, but he was just basically like, attention is the new oil. And I was like, yes, that's exactly right. Back 100 years ago, the way you got rich was if you were in the oil fields, yep. if you you know, had the railroads, right. back to the railroads. Or the, the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> yeah. They like, struck oil on their land. And they're like, Woo, whatever. Like that was how you got rich. Today, if you go viral and you're consistently coming, putting out content, you have attention, you're going to get rich. Yep. Some way, somehow. Yeah, make a burger, make a makeup line, or make whatever you, even, you want. Or you don't even need a business. You know, you could be like my buddy Graham Stephan, mm -hmm. where he's cool, just making money from sponsors, AdSense. Right. And he'll make his millions doing that. Now, granted, Graham will never be a billionaire doing that. You can't be a billionaire or even probably a hundred millionaire from just building other people's businesses. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Like you'll make good money every year, year over year, and he's fine with that. But- if you actually build a business with your attention, you're going to make big money. Yep, big time. So with that in mind, looking, working backwards, like the first thing that's apparent to me is, you know, of course you had the idea. You're like, hey, it wasn't easy for me to go from being unknown on social media relatively to having a massive following and generating tons of demand for your other businesses. But it took obviously the expertise that you've grown, but then the backing into the demand for the product. So that's one thing like from the art perspective or Mr. Beast, like that dude was making videos. For 10 years before he ever, he's been making videos since he's like 14 years old. Right, before he ever considered like, oh, is there a market for this? Like, yeah. And same with me with music or any artist out there, or any 
person out there that's not coming from it with a business mind. That's awesome. But what's disheartening about that is it's very hard to systemize and, and predict. So, well, you've, have you ever started an actual business other than like your Airbnbs or something? Like, have you ever, no, cause no. you've always worked a job. Yeah. Yeah. I, ever since baseball, I worked, a, well, I went on the lam for two years playing music on a sailboat. Right. And then settled down, got a job. And you were unemployed. Yeah, I was, I was unemployed, but I had rentals. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Justin, have you ever tried to start a business? No, I mean, outside of what I've done, you know, videography and photography, yeah. that's probably the only thing that I've started at. Those, I, I would consider those more like huh. side hustles. Like, yeah, I'm going right. to do this on the side, but right. I still need my main thing, whatever that's going to be. Right. Yeah, we're totally inexperienced. It's like last, you know, we talked about fighting recently and going into a place and not having any idea what's going on, not knowing right. the terminology. It's a good point, man. I feel like I talk to a lot of business folks and I'm, you know, I can speak the language, but I've never started a business. Right. Like how frightening would it be today? I'm like, hey guys, <laughs> you can't go get a job, nor can you work here. Like, good luck. Back on that sailboat. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't be as frightened as I would have been two be. years ago. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Back then for sure. I yeah. agree with you. Right. So, I mean two reasons like you wouldn't be as frightened for your your sake one is i mean obviously you're in a better place now than you were two years ago two you now have connections and expertise that you didn't have two years ago which goes back into why content empire is important right mm -hmm. because it's about being known and growing your brand because justin barry's on this podcast he's now known and i hope he never leaves me but if he <laughs> ever does and becomes like d rock or these other guys, like he has a brand now. Yep. And it's because he put the work in to build his brand. You know, and and you're and we talked about this before Content Empire. His brand will grow as much as he wants it to grow. Right. Right. For sure. And all I can do is like I literally want everyone in my companies to grow their brands. Like I practice what I preach. Um like Brian Davila. I freaking love that he's got a hundred thousand Instagram followers now. Like he can go carry some of the load for future flippers so I don't have to. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's great, you know? And the more we can build up everyone in the ecosystem, it's like, man, having you on the show, I hope you take advantage of it and, like, put content with it and grow your brand. 100%. Yeah. And in considering all of that, not having started a business goes back to that kind of, uh, you know, we call it being soft, but kind of being timid to act. But what I've seen, man, is that all these folks, if you have a skill, if you have something you like to do, you're you're shooting yourself in the foot if you're not putting effort into nourishing that idea. Yeah. Uh, Joe Rogan said it really well. He's like, if you're living a life that doesn't match like your spirit and what you feel called to do, you need to view it as a very serious life or death situation and escape from that jail slowly with discipline. Right. So it's like you have a plan, and I think, uh, for me at least, this content empire is a way to take what I've already built with music for so many years as an artist and begin to try to build something around it that will allow me to do it full time. Um, so, like you said, man, with, with the podcast and the visibility and, you know, it's something that feels very natural because mm -hmm. we're just buds and we see each other all the time. Mm -hmm. But what you're proving is that the attention that is frankly really difficult to cultivate unless you have a system um well when you mix attention valuable. with a system yeah you make a ton of money exactly so that's what it comes down to so here's kind of like how i create a new business and decide and um here's and this, like what I'm telling you now is after years of doing this and like finally figuring it out. Right. Um, and also now my criteria is much more strict because there's a lot of businesses I could start right now that will make me a million dollars, but right. it's just not worth it because like at this point, I only want to start a business that's got eight figure potential, you know, maybe even more down the road. Right. And I think there are businesses that you're going to start that are like a high cash flow businesses. And then there are some that are more long term, right? So like a high cash flow business would be like Content Empire, right? Mm -hmm. Like super high margins. It's education. You know, it's going to start making money right away. Pineda Capital, on the other hand, is not that way. Mm. We have to wait years to get paid, right? Pineda Capital loses me money 
right now. Right. Like that's how it is. It has to be that way as you build. Yeah, because we have staff. We're not making money like on the rentals. Like it, our take is so minimal mm. during the process of getting it done, but we get paid at the end In when chunks. it sells or refinances. Right. That's how, just how it is. Right. Um. And, you know, there's things like I talk about with digital real estate and Web3. Like, that's not going to make money right away if I start those businesses. But I know I'm building them for the future to be billion-dollar companies. Right. Right. So most people, you're not going to go start a long-term play that makes you no money. Like, you're not going to afford it. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking more along the lines of, okay, what's the purpose of this business? Okay, I need to replace my job. I need to, like, support my family and make money. Cool. For me, the first business was couch flipping. I'm like, right. I can make money right now doing this. I can make four thousand a month, five thousand a month. This is tight. Obviously, then it kept growing to different things: house flipping, education, brokerage, tax, all these things, right? So now my time is so like valuable that I, ha if I'm going to focus, it has to be on something that mm -hmm. is going to have a super high return. And so, um, when it came to creating content empire in any business, the first thing I always look at is demand mm. okay so i just listen to what people are asking me right like uh, i'm interacting with so many people every day i read the comments i see the dms and if i constantly see the same things over and over again that tells me there's insane demand for this thing right so the most recent business i launched was tykes and with tykes man people have been talking about nfts for the last year people have been talking about this and that and i'm like tykes is gonna crush it like people want it they want to get in the space. They just don't really get it yet. Right. And Tykes has crushed it. Um, Tykes was my my fastest seven-figure business. I mean, from the day it launched, to, I mean, it, it did seven <laughs> figures in two days. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it took nine months of development. Right. So I think Tykes isn't as, like, big of a success story as you might seem because mm -hmm. there was so much work behind the scenes. Um, but I also think Tykes is literally a nine-figure company. Like, I believe that. If we just do what we do, a lot of these NFT companies, like Board Ape Yacht Club, got valued at four billion. Jeez. Azuki, I think, is just about to get like five hundred million. Um, another one got valued at like seven hundred million doodles or something. We're better than those. Maybe not Board Apes, but we're better. I don't even know what doodles does. Well, and utility wise, you're a lot. Yeah, better than we're Board gonna Apes. kill them. Yeah. So I I think Tykes will be my first nine figure brand. So today's podcast is brought to you by Future Flipper. So Future Flipper is a real estate education company that I founded back in 2018. And since then, we have helped thousands of students all across the country learn how to invest in real estate. And it doesn't matter whether you're trying to learn how to flip houses, whether you're looking to wholesale or build your rental portfolio, we've helped everyone in all the different circumstances. This even includes people who have never done a real estate deal. We've helped beginners get their very first deal. We helped other people who have already done some deals scale to doing multiple deals a month. And we've even helped people get to my level, people to scale their business to doing over a hundred deals a year learning to become an owner of the company and not be involved in the day-to-day -day and learn how to delegate and hire employees at the highest level. So regardless of what boat you are in, we can help you out at Future Flipper. We've got amazing events. We've got amazing coaches. I coach directly in Future Flipper, and I would love to help you get to the next level. So all that being said, if you are interested in getting a free consultation call, a free strategy call to see what it's going to take to help you get to the next level, go to futureflipper.com and you can book a call with my team. Once again, check out futureflipper.com to book a call. I know that many of my listeners on this podcast are high income earners in fields outside of real estate. And they always ask me, Ryan, how should I invest my money? Should I go start flipping houses? Should I buy an Airbnb? Should I buy rentals? What do you think? And I always say, look, a better use of your time is continuing to build your business and your career because you're already really good at it. Trying to go figure out how to do real estate deals on your own and managing construction and all that stuff is probably not the best use of your time, but you can still invest in real estate by joining Pineda Capital. We will do everything for you. We will find the deals, we will manage them, we will get them renovated, we'll get them rented out and everything else. All you've got to do is invest and you're going to get a return on your money. So if you want to figure out what is the next deal that you can invest in, you can go to PinedaCapital.com. Currently, we're only open it to accredited investors only. So if you want to get in on our next deal and you want to get on the VIP list, definitely go to PinedaCapital.com and apply today. Regardless of that, okay, 
I knew Tykes would do well because of the demand. And also, it's a long-term play. It's a mix between a short-term and a long-term yeah, play right. mm-hmm. where it made money right away, yep. and I know where it's going. So super hyped about Tykes. That's why you see me do so much for Tykes. Mm. Um, with Content Empire, when I first started making content in 2020, everybody asked me. They were like, dude, how did you do it? How did you make YouTube videos? How do you make TikToks? How do you do this? I didn't want to coach people at the time because I was so busy doing other things and still building the brand. Like I still didn't understand how to do it. Totally. Right. I was still, still hiring people. System. I was still doing trial and error, making mistakes and all that. And I said, look, I'll make a course and I'll sell the course. So I made my social media academy. You know, we sold a hundred thousand worth in the first month and you know, after that, I just kind of didn't really promote it. And I'm like, it's there if anyone wants it, but I don't really like it's there. Yeah, right. Um, 2021, same deal. Everyone's like, dude, you know, tell me how to do this. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, look, I'm still busy. Like 2021, I launched the podcast. I launched Panetta Capital. We launched Lunar. You know, I had so many things I was doing and launching that I was like, I just don't have time to do this. Right. So we go into 2022. People are still asking me this all the time. And I'm like, I'm launching Tykes, I'm launching <laughs> Wealthy Woman. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just never the timing was, ne- and we were scaling Future Flipper to like new levels. We we're throwing huge events. And so the timing was never right. And, um, but I always knew down the road, it would be something right at some point. Well, and, and all along you're tweaking your system yeah. to make it better. I've yeah. seen that. During this time, I mean, Justin, how, when did you come on? I came on 2021. Yeah, beginning February. of 2021. You know, Sion and I started in 2020. Um, it was just me and Sion. Then we hired, uh, I think, Kyler. Kyler came on. Kyler and, right and Ray. Yep. That was it. It was like a three man team. Yep. Then we brought you on for the podcast. Best and podcast in the world, by the way. Best podcast <laughs> in the world. Um, you didn't know I was recruiting you to be a host. And <laughs> yeah, right. No clue. <laughs> grooming. <laughs> grooming you right. to be a host. And, you know, then we hire editors and we get TikTok. Guys. And like, so in the last two and a half years, the team constantly changed. And he'll tell you, Justin will tell you throughout this time, because there's no blueprint for how to do this. This is a new industry. Yep. How many times did I tweak it and like... Oh, I mean, we change things all the time because there's something new to, to learn. And even when you're dealing with content, period, there's always changing, you know, things. And so, like, you got to kind of change with what's happening, but you also got to change your system to know, you know, to, to make it be efficient and make it work well. We were, we're always changing something until something, like, there was a point, too, like you'd say, like, we were like, this is finally, we're finally there. Like, okay, it's running smoothly kind of on autopilot everybody knows what they need to do but yeah that's it's a, it was a constant change of things all the time it was about trial and error of testing things and i remember i had a lot of these talented guys and i basically had to blow it up and i've blown it up with many companies right because you go into creating a business thinking that this is the way it's going to be and these are the people you have and then after doing the business for a while you realize this person does not fit here that person fits better over here. Mm-hmm. And then you realize, like, we don't really need this position for what we do. And so I've done it with Home Run Offer. I've done it with content, like many. And, you know, sometimes you have to fire people just because maybe it's not even that they did anything wrong, but it's just like it's not really necessary for what this business is. Right. And so um, content or building the content team was years of figuring out what we need, who's in charge of what, building systems and processes. Because I'll tell you, man, I can't tell you how many times we lost a video because it didn't get up- uploaded properly. Mm. The audio was missing. Um, I had to revise it like four times because it's just coming to me in the first draft. And I'm like, dude, there's like 800 errors here. Like, give me a better draft before I see it because this sucks, you know? Um, then just thumbnails and like, there's so much that goes into it that we had to systematize. And, um, even today we still have to systematize. Like I, I I got on Justin two days ago because I'm like, why does the podcast audio suck? Like it, you know, I'm like, (laughs) whose job was it to catch it? You know, we got a podcast editor. 
We got a guy reviewing. Then we have a person posting. How do three people right. miss this? Mm. Do I need to start watching it again? Yeah. I hope not. But I'm the one who caught it right? because I watched the final product once it was already posted. And by then it's too late. Mm. So like even today, we're still like any other business, still making mistakes, still learning. But we know what we're supposed to do. It's just, you know, there's people. Yeah, it's human error. <laughs> and with volume. Yeah, there's human, human error. error and that that is what it is. But we try our best to... We need um, like one of those things in construction sites. It's been 300 days yeah. <laughs> yeah. since someone was killed on site. <laughs> That's what we're going to do in studio. Yeah. <laughs> 300 days since Ryan killed someone. <laughs> um, so anyways, like finally, okay, what happened was all this time people have been telling me, I knew that this would be my next business at some point um, when the timing was right. And um, what actually sparked it was two things. One was Justin, and another was my friend Omar. Um, I was golfing with Omar, and this was like maybe a week before you reached out to me. And Omar and I are talking about life and what he's going to do and all these things. And he starts talking about wanting to potentially do like a course for mm. content and maybe some coaching and some consulting. So I'm telling him, I'm like, hey, Omar. If I were to do content coaching, <laughs> here's how I would do it. And I'm like, boom, boom, boom. This is He's like, wow, that's a really good plan. Why don't you just do it? And I'm like, you know, at some point I'm going to. But, you know, I, I'm like, it, it will happen at some point. But right. you could use it if you want. You know, take some variation of it. Did he use it at all? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but this is, it's not, and to not to his fault, but, mm -mm. you know, it's like. He's got a lot going on, too. He's got a lot going on, yeah. timing, all these things. But also, too, now at this point, like I said, I could spin a business off. The moment I commit, it's done. Yeah. It's going to be done. Nothing will stop me. Right. And it's over. But at that point, I hadn't fully bought in. And then um, Justin reached out to me. I don't even remember what happened. I mean, I so it's funny. Like, Ryan probably doesn't remember, but when you were doing, we were filming the house for Tyke Share. And we were there and we were pulling up to, in the driveway and I was like, Ryan, why aren't you teaching what we're doing to people? Like, I can see this being the exact same business as Future Flipper. And he was like, it's not enough money. doesn't make sense. And, you know, for a video guy, I'm like, wow. Like, he just told me it, it would never be enough money for one. So it was like, do I, do, do I take that, what he said, and look at it like I'm not, that my value will never be high enough to be, you know, at sitting at the top somewhere or, or making a substantial amount of money doing this. Right. Should I be considering a different career path? Like, it's like, it was that. But then I was like, no, it made sense to me because he first, he thinks time first. Mm. It's like the time that it would take for me to do that would make sense right now. So, but I also told, like, I told Sion that day, I was like, I'm just trying to plant the seed, man. Like, <laughs> I'm just trying, you know, I know, like, I've been around him long enough to know, and, like, I've been in rooms with him where other people are, like, pitching ideas to him. Right. To know that the fact that he responded was a good thing. Yeah. Right? You know, it, it, otherwise he just goes, yeah, that would be a good idea. And <laughs> if, he, if he does that to me, then I was like, okay, this is a dead issue. <laughs> but I, I knew then that, that you know, I, I, I could kind of plant a seed. I knew it was probably on his mind at some point anyway. But then when I reached out to him again, I had just so happened. This was, and this was months. Yeah, this was, a, yeah, almost six or seven months between each other probably mm. um, that these and, conversations happened. And by the way, when somebody tells me something and I'm like currently in the midst of building something else, Everything is a bad idea. Right. Like, yeah. I'm just right. like, Tykes. If it's not this thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tykes is going to be huge. Yeah. This is all I'm worried about. <laughs> I could care less about the next big thing. Yep. Yeah. And that that's what it does take, though, it, yeah. to successfully launch whatever it is you're trying to launch. Right. Yeah. And something else that I've learned is about the follow up. You just got to keep following up at some point. So you just wait your opportunity to keep following up. But I also know, like, um, he, I can always say I always give him the biggest credit because it'd be like an idea and in 30 days a successful business, mm. right? So like I knew that if I can you know can do it one more time at the right off, right time and get him to actually settle to think about it, that there was a lot of opportunity. So um, what was happening was I was getting a, a lot of people from his mastermind, a lot of people that had, that come and visit the office. Every time we get a guest in that has their own camera crew or their own videographer coming. There's always a ton of questions, and they get directed to me. And I was like, man, like, 
at, to up until this point, we just been giving it up. Like we just been giving all the information out. Right. And I was like, but I'm. I also got a chance to watch what people were doing with the information, and they just needed help. Well, fragmented information is so hard to act on. It's hard. And, and yeah, give me some information for five minutes. Like, yeah, yep. how valuable yeah. is it going to be? Right. Yeah, exactly. And I, I just knew like there was there was an opportunity there to help people, which is what the majority of his businesses do anyway. And so I was like, you know, I just shoot him a text, like Ryan, you know, uh, you know, you can be doing this, this, and this. We should we should really think about it. And then I always throw the money in because I know that's you know that's the motivator too. Like I'm like, there's a lot of money we leaving on the table yeah. by not doing it. Infinitely scalable. Um, and I just I just saw opportunity not only for my you know for my own growth, but like for everybody that's here and involved and that's been doing this the last couple of years. Um, so I just saw it as a good play. And but his response was crazy. It's like I don't know if you want to tell the story like how you responded in that moment. But I don't I, even remember how I responded. So first you were like, yeah, I'm gonna get through the mastermind. Then we'll talk about it. And then the next day, I get a. He was on vacation. Like he, uh, where he's, was I at? I don't even remember. Somewhere in California. You were oh, San Diego, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you were. He's on vacation. The next day, he sends me. I already got it done. Here's the and it's a whole like layout of how this business is gonna work. Wow. And I was like, that's what I mean when I like. I I don't even know how to describe that to people like that don't know him. Like this is how fast his brain is able to kind of put together a strategy and a plan and a and a business proposal. So it was. It was very impressive, but I knew, like, you know, there were going to be big things coming from that for sure. Big time. Well, but here's the thing, too, about um, ideas and inspiration and other things. So I get a lot of ideas, like a general idea from lots of things, right? I, I see a video, somebody tells me something, whatever, right? And it's, like, on the right path, but it's not the idea, mm -hmm. right? And so originally, right, with Tykes, let's take Tykes, for example. A lot of people during the NFT hype are like, Ryan, you got to start an NFT. You could do this. And I'm like, I know. It's great. But now's not the time. That's always my default response. Because I'm, like, <laughs> I'm usually working on something else. I'm right. never not working on something. Right? So if you yep. give me an idea today, I'm working on Content Empire right now. Like, right. And, and Tykes and all the other things I got. Like, I'm not starting another thing. So most likely, though, somebody's going to tell me a good idea in six months from now. Like it, it'll probably get executed, whatever. But with Tykes, before it was ever Tykes, people were like, dude, you should start an NFT and you could sell your courses. You could, um, you know, do this or do that. And I'm like, you know, they're like, you could make a future flipper NFT. And I'm like, those are good ideas. They're pretty generic ideas that everyone else is doing. But if I do an NFT, it's going to be something sole and separate from everything else that I do. And it's going to be completely different. There's going to be a purpose. There's going to be like, it's not as simple as your mind, you simple minded <laughs> idea. Yeah. Right? And so, you know, as I process through the idea of months of processing and finally people, you know, like, Hey, like, let's do it. Let's do it. And I finally, I was like, all right, fine, we'll do it. Let me think through what this is actually going to be. And then, you know, the idea of Tykes was the initial idea was born and then developed as time went along, mm. right? Of like, look, I'm going to target real estate people in crypto who want to dominate this new revolution of what's to come with blockchain and real estate. Mm. That's the idea. Future Flipper, sure, can be like involved in a little bit and people need tax and like those things will happen, but the focus has nothing to do with any of my existing companies. Right. Right? Where It's its own thing by itself. So that was an example of like taking the general idea and refining it to what made it ultra successful, well, right? And and what you do there and what people do there in general is almost like underwriting a real estate deal or buying a house where you're like, if you're not looking at houses all the time, you're not going to know that feeling of this is the one. No, I would actually even take it a step further back. The example of what that is, is they say, Ryan, we got this um, 10,000 square foot box for sale. Yeah. Do you want to buy it? Right. And it's like, well, there's a lot we could do with the box. Uh. We can make it storage. We can make it multifamily. We could make it a house, a mansion. Like right. your mind could really do a lot of different things with the box. But yeah, I do agree. I should buy that box because <laughs> it's a good deal yeah. and it's on a good street and, you know, the price is good. That's the equivalent. Mm. Now, what you do with the box is mm. what makes it ultra valuable right right hey you should start an nft 
no crap. You don't think I thought of that? <laughs> yeah. Like, how do I make the NFT valuable? The specifics unfold, yeah. Right. So when Justin first came to me, and the reason I said it wasn't enough money was because he was thinking too small with it. Mm -hmm. His initial idea was, hey, Ryan, we should become a media company. And I go, what do you mean? And he goes, well, we should start like producing content for other people, right? And I go, no, it's not enough money. And the reason is it's not, right? Because scalability. Well, it's not scalable. Yeah. You need a ton of labor. You need all this stuff. You also need the right talent because if I'm going to go manage some guy, right? Like and he's got no following, taking zero following, like it ain't worth my time. Mm -hmm. It ain't enough money, right? On the other side, I have said this before. Would I go partner with guys who are like Mr. Beast, but they're not there yet mm -hmm. and they want to learn business? Right. Cool. Like maybe if right. they're the right partner, right? right? Like if they, I think they could sell a good product and I can go create the product in the business and we can go partner together. Sure. And that's what I told Justin. I was like, I, I would be interested in those things because those are money. But if us just making content for people and helping them build their con, no, it's not enough money. And be, for all those reasons I laid out, right? Right. Now, when he came back, that that was probably whatever, six, seven months ago. I'm like, mm -hmm. it ain't enough money. That's stupid. We're not doing that. And then he came back to me and he said, hey, you know, with the wealthy way, I think we could do a lot of things like with media. Like you need to reconsider the idea of kind of helping people do content. And I think your mind was still at like the management side of content mm -hmm. at that point. And, you know, we were doing consultations with guys too. You know, I had multiple people that came up to me. They were like, hey, can can you guys like do consultations and help us do this stuff? And I was like, here, you know, here's Justin. Here's the price. He'll do it. And, you know, we saw a great success with um, our guy, Jack. Yes. What, what, what did Jack do? Jack started off with probably two to three hundred on his following. Um, two to three hundred, not yeah, hundred thousand. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Jack and Bosch. Five weeks, five weeks. He's over a hundred thousand. Um, doing on both, like doing really well on both Instagram and TikTok, and he's seeing leads come in from that too. So wow, real yeah. estate guy. Yeah, yep. uh, land, land flipping. flipping. Yeah. Oh, yep. cool. So buddy of mine, and um, you know, he's been asking me about content for a long time, and I said finally, hey, we I don't sell anything for content coaching, but I'll put you with my producer, and we'll just do one on one like hour calls. And so obviously the results work and Justin's seeing that because he's the one doing the calls and he's like, man, like we got to figure out how to scale this and everything else. But for me, as I said, from the beginning, I told him this on the call, I was like, we will do no editing. <laughs> yeah, We will do yeah. no management. We will do nothing of the sort because that's not scalable. That's not where the money's at. The money's in what you were telling Jack in the mm -hmm. consultations, right. in the trainings, in the education. Yep. And if people don't take it, it's on them. It ain't right. my problem, right? But I know what we have as far as the processes and everything we've developed. They're worth millions and millions of dollars if applied and if you listen and you know, you're willing to do it for the long haul. Right. Like cuz content, not everyone's going to be like Jack where they get 100,000 in 5 weeks, mm -hmm. right? But if you could get 100,000 in 1 year or 2 years, how valuable would that be to you? Huge. Right. It'd be very valuable. The number one question I get asked by entrepreneurs is, Ryan, how do I create a personal brand like you have? How do I start monetizing social media? And I've been asked it so many times that I said, you know what? It's time to start a business and teach everyone exactly how I've done it. If you wanna learn how I've been able to grow my social media following to 1.7 million followers in just two years, and you wanna learn how we've gotten over 500 million views and turn those views into over a million dollars a month in revenue, and Content Empire is for you. You see, there's a lot of people who are teaching how to you know, go viral on one platform or how to run paid ads or funnels, but nobody has figured out how to organically merge the two. Most people think it's pay to play. But if you want to learn how to get organic content, build a fan base, build people who want to buy your products who don't need to be sold, then I want you to go to contentempire.io, apply for a free strategy session with my team. We will teach you how to build your business on social media and monetize. So once again, go to contentempire.io and we'll chat with you. One of the most overlooked aspects of running a business is who you're using for your bookkeeping, accounting, and your taxes. Unfortunately, most investors go the cheap route and they end up paying for it in the long haul. 
They're not properly keeping books. They have no idea how much money's coming in, how much money's going out. They're really just running off of their gut instead of running on hard data. This is where TrueBooks comes into play. TrueBooks is my CPA firm where we have helped hundreds of investors and small business owners all across the country get their books dialed in, pay less in taxes, and take advantage of every deduction that you are entitled to. Most CPAs, it seems like they're working for the IRS. We are not that way. We want to make sure that you get everything you're entitled to. So if you wanna learn about how we can help you out today, go to truebookcpa.com. Like I said, we've helped out real estate investors, we've helped out crypto investors, entrepreneurs, influencers, you name it. We have helped them and we can help you. So go to truebookcpa.com. Right, and so um, for me, I told Justin, I was like, I don't think it's a wealthy way thing that you're talking about. And I don't think it's a media company you're talking about. And I don't think it's a production company. What it is, is an education company, just like Future Flipper, that's totally separate from anything that exists currently in the ecosystem. Very much like I said with types. I'm like, this NFT is not what you're thinking it is. It's something far bigger than what you're thinking it is. And, you know, as I thought about it after the conversation, I was like, okay, how would I do this? Because, like, I was just talking to him for like an hour and I was just talking through, like, yeah. this is what it would need to be if it did, this is how it would make money, you know, when the timing's right, we'll do it, you know, et cetera. And then I, I like went to sleep that night and I was like, you know what? I think the timing is right. Mm. And immediately I was inspired. I wrote the business plan and, you know, I sent it to him and I said, Justin, this is what the product actually needs to be. And this is why it's going to win. And, um, the point was, the reason, it, I mean, we're, we're in launch by the time this episode launches, like, we'll probably be right at the start. But, mm -hmm. I mean, it's already been a win, right? Right. But the reason it will win is because of the first principle of starting a business, which everybody needs to write down here, is that you need to solve a problem that's not, you know, like, solved by somebody else, for instance. Like, for me. And, look, it, and I should preface this and say, like, if you're going to go start a burrito shop, like <laughs> somebody else, Chipotle's got burritos, right? So what part of burritos mm, are you different. solving that doesn't exist today? Right. Right. Like personally, I don't really know of any Asian burritos or, yeah. you know, whatever. Right. Like a good example of this, the sushi burritos, those got so popular because they solved a problem. Yeah. People love sushi. People love burritos. Nobody's making both. Yep. So these guys make sushi burritos. And nobody's eating sushi on the go. Right. Nobody eats sushi on the go. This solves all the problems, mm. right? So you're taking something that exists and solving the problem. So from the production company standpoint, not only does it not make a lot of money, but lots of people do that. We're not really solving anyone's problem. Now, when I looked at the other content education companies, I saw that there's two trains of thought. You have the people saying, hey, here's how to be a YouTuber. Here's how to be a TikToker. Here's how to start your first podcast, right? Yep. They're very much like in Niche. that mindset, but they're not teaching you anything about business or anything. And also too, the reality is most of those are for like broke kids who are trying to figure out how to be a influencer or content creator. Right. Nothing wrong with that. I was a broke kid too, trying to flip couches and get into real estate, but that ain't my target. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. When you're in business, you have to understand who you're going after and what problem they are facing and they're trying to solve. Okay. So you had that being addressed to all the broke kids who will pay like 200 bucks for a course. Then you have entrepreneurs. Now I came from the entrepreneur world. So what I did was I put myself back in my own shoes when I started. And I said, what are my problems and concerns when I was getting started in content? Well, I remember I called my buddy, well, my now buddy, Sean Cannell at Think Media. And at the time, I talked to their sales guy. I go, hey, how much for you guys to do it for me? Yeah. Like, literally, I have money. I will pay. Just give the price. They didn't have a product, mm. right? And, you know, I know how entrepreneurs think. They want to cheat. They want to fast track it. Right. Especially if they have a successful business. Time is more valuable to them than money. And so every entrepreneur who follows me, which is the majority of people who follow me, all know the value of content. They've seen me do it. They know it's valuable. Right. It's no longer a conspiracy theory. It's not a conspiracy <laughs> theory, okay? And 
they they've gone through most of the, not most of them, but some of them have gone through the route of buying followers and all the shout outs and stuff. Mm-hmm. They've realized that stuff doesn't work. Right. So basically I had these entrepreneurs who have nobody catering to them on teaching them how to actually create content for their personal brand and their business. Right. Because they don't really fit in this box over here where these guys aren't concerned about business. They're just concerned about creating viral random videos. Right. Where these guys need to make videos that are relevant to their business. And then also they need to figure out how to create funnels and the right pages to mm-hmm. go get traffic to their business, right? And monetize the attention. And monetize All the right. attention. So I said, you know what? This product, the person we are looking for is the entrepreneur, somebody who is already having a business but they're not where they want to be content wise. Maybe mm-hmm. they're starting to make videos. Okay. Yeah, I, right. We got a lot of people who are doing that. Maybe they've never made a video. This is for all those entrepreneurs. I don't want the broke college kid. Right. That's not who I'm targeting. Now, granted, those people will join, right? But they're going to be a small demographic. Right. The large majority of these people are, are going to be entrepreneurs and investors. And guess what? They already got money. They're right. willing to pay big bucks to learn this because they know the ROI right. is insane for them. Right. If they believe in the, what they're doing and then want and buy into the shortcutting the timeline. Yeah. It's going to be a no brainer. It's a no brainer. It's the easiest sell ever. So, you know, at the end of the day, I came up with the problem that people I know were facing because I myself was facing it. Mm. There was no solution. There still is no solution today until now. Right. right. And now the solution is here. You want to learn what these guys know about going viral and creating content, not across one platform, but being omnipresent right. everywhere. Right. Right. Totally. And you also want to learn how to create it at scale. So mm-hmm. you're not editing. You're treating it like a business. Yep. It's systematized. You're building a team. You want the org chart, the SOPs. We already got it. Cool. And then you want to learn how to take those views and not in a super salesy way, funnel them to your business in an ethical, good way where they're still getting a ton of value but they're also you're letting them know what you've got, right? And you know, converting those into deals and into revenue, nobody has it except us. Yep. And that's the problem we solve. Man, that makes me think of uh, I think it was Grant Cardone, but when it comes to selling or pitching, sometimes sellers or salespeople in training, and that's what I've had experience in is training sellers they will feel timid to pursue the sales process because they're like, I I don't want to push it on them. I don't want to be pushy. And something that you mentioned that Grant Cardone (laughs) said to you was that if you feel like you have something that can help people and you don't do everything you can do to help them see that truth, then you're not only doing yourself a disservice, but you're failing in your responsibility to help others. Mm -hmm. And the way this plays into buying into content around your business. Like, and I feel this way about, about music and I keep bringing it up, but it's important that you acknowledge that what you're doing and what you do is valuable to other people. It can help other people. If you feel that way, there's no better way than to ensure that you show other people the truth of that fact than to have a huge social media presence and be pumping content out there it's it's basically buying into the sale of the value that you have Mm. to give the world right thousand percent and so you know and and content empire will get people like you who don't necessarily Mm -hmm. have a business but you're a musician right right and you do want to sell music or whatever you end up wanting to sell down the road you're not sure about the business side yet right but you are going to learn how to get more known and by hearing all of the ways you funnel those views into money, you're going to be like, oh, actually, I could definitely make a business around this. Exactly. Like, and that blank box yeah. starts but, to But it's not like I'm together. targeting you with my marketing efforts. I'm not going to be like, you know, if you're a musician or an artist or anything, <laughs> like, this is great. I'm going to teach you how to build a business around. That's not it. Right. That is a, a different thing. But the problem is, once you go that route, if those people are broke... How are they going to buy your stuff? They're not buying. Yeah, of course. When I go the reverse route, it makes it easy for them to buy. Right. So to me, to yeah. me too, like Blake seems like the perfect individual because of what he's going to get from everybody else that's on their journey now. 
like on those on these calls and these in this community that's gonna be built for the people that are unsure because like I think that's a that's the majority of people whether they're posting content right now I know, I see a lot of content that has no purpose right yeah. they're doing it every day and yep. it has no real purpose to why you're doing it and I think like for individuals that may have something that they're working on but unsure of direction like this is gonna be like the perfect situation because you're gonna hear everybody else's failures as well. And where everybody else is missing the mark. So it's going to be a really, really good moment, a good community, a good period of time for these individuals that are a part of it, for Big sure. Big time. And a lot of it's self-discovery of you and your business. Yeah. You know, and... We, we got to come up with a cool name for, like, the people in the community. I mean, creators is, like, the the generic name, but, I mean, our, our logo's a lion, so maybe it's the lions. Yeah. You know? And, Ooh, I like that. Yeah. It, by the way, screen flash it whoever's editing this We're like, show watch it. It on youtube of like the logo best it's logo <laughs> from all your companies for I, sure i'll just rock that logo without even any like yeah. it's just a tight logo it's like a clothing brand logo yeah, it it's is that cool yeah he sent it to me without any reference of what it was and the moment he said i was like he knows he yeah. knows he got one on this one <laughs> yep. like he's yeah. very aware that this is a tight logo but yeah it's gonna be i'm excited man like i'm really excited for what's about to happen for people because I think once it gets going, like like you said, there's going to be a lot of lions. There's going to be a lot of people that everywhere. are going to do big Dude, things. Dude, and of all the things you could do to help people, like Future Flipper is awesome because it really, I've, I've met and been sat with a lot of people that have had their lives changed and their situations changed by what they've learned in Future Flipper. But this is one that I feel like is a lot even more accessible than Future Flipper. Oh, yeah. It's for anybody, any entrepreneur. Right. right? It's not real mm -hmm. estate. Um. So, yeah, I mean, like, th the reason it's going to be successful is because we identified a huge need that's not being addressed. Right. Number one. Number two, um, it comes down to the marketing, right? How mm -hmm. do you market it? How do I get it in those entrepreneurs' heads that they need to do this, right? And they don't need to do it because I, I want them to pay me money to teach them. Yeah, no. Like, they need to do it. <laughs> right. There's just no other way around it. If you're an entrepreneur and... You're not making content, your competitor is, and they're taking your cookies. Yep. That's the reality of the world, and it will continue to get that way. I am not the most talented in any of my businesses. There are people who are more talented and better businesses that could service you better. Guess what? You don't know them, and that's fine by me. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Because I'm better at marketing. And this is the point of why Content Empire exists is like, you should be that guy. I always say it the best marketer wins, not the best product. Mm -hmm. Whoever has the most attention wins. Always. And so the reason, you know, it's already done six figures is not because the product is so great and we're, you know, solving a problem. It's because the marketing mm -hmm. was there and the attention was there to get people to buy it. Right. In fact, I, I just threw it up at the event. I wasn't even going to sell it at the event. And this goes back to listening to your audience. Right. I had already created everything and I was going to launch it at the end of October. And the event was at the end of um, September. Mm. And I didn't want to confuse people and, you know, have all these different offers. But right. during VIP day, literally, <laughs> yeah. and I go, hey, guys, on VIP day, we got four hours. I have no agenda. You tell me what you guys want to learn. I go, Sh start raising your hands. What do you want to learn? Some guy goes, I want to learn how you run so many businesses. I'm like, all right, that's great. Cool. The next guy goes, I want to learn how you make content. <laughs> I was like, all right, that's cool. And the guy goes, I want to learn how to build a personal brand. I was like, all right, that's cool. Does anyone want to learn real estate? I'm like, yeah. Like, <laughs> what yeah. Do, but how many of you guys are here for real estate at this real estate event? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and people were like, yeah, you know, we want to learn that too. That's fine, but what yeah. about content? And, but literally, it kept coming back, back, back. And I was like, fine. I made it an audible. I go, guys, we're going to launch Content Empire tomorrow for pre-sale at the event. Here's how it's going down. Launch it. And then sure enough, it did six figures in an hour. Wow. Right? And... Now we launched it to the rest of the world like two weeks later because I still had stuff to tweak towards mm. the marketing and the branding. But right. I just gave people the opportunity who were ready to buy, obviously. Um, so anyways, the marketing is key. If you're launching a business, how you market is going to dictate how much success you have. From there, it goes into the sales process. You know, are people willing to buy your stuff? You know, for us, most of the time we have to get on a sales call with them because we sell expensive things, right? Mm -hmm. People are paying thousands of dollars to buy into our programs, right? It's not something like this cup where you buy it for 10 bucks and like people are chill. Yep. I don't sell products like that, at least right now. So you have to understand if you're selling a high ticket item, 
you're going to have to be good at the sales process of getting people to understand, hey, I need to buy this. You know, this is going to be worth it. My return on investment will be good mm -hmm. if I choose to do this. So sales process is super big. And like I, I've said this before, but like when we were figuring out how to scale Future Flipper, um, I remember when we first hit six figures in a month, we were like, this is crazy. This is great. Then we got to like 200,000 in a month. And then we kind of stalled out, which still great money. Right. But I knew we were leaving so much money on the table and like we were listening to calls and just, I'm like, how did that person not buy? That was, they, they were ready to like buy and give money. Like, I don't get it. Right. Right. So I immediately changed my salespeople and improved our sales process. Same amount of leads came in, but the revenue went from four, 200 to 400. Wow. Nothing changed other than the sales process. Right. And you know, Justin was actually saying this. He's like, man, I, I remember watching the sales guys. If they had a good week or not, they'd be walking around with their chest held high. <laughs> yeah. Other it's times like it'd be low. And I remember always telling all of them, I go, guys, you got it good right now because you're the only ones here, but I'm bringing in killers who are coming to take your mm -hmm. spot because you guys ain't cutting it. Mm. Like I just told them that straight up. And they're like, yeah, you know, the salespeople always make excuses about everything. And I'm like, trust me. The leads are good. Mm -hmm. You're not closing. Mm -hmm. And then sure enough, I mean, they all did get replaced, which I didn't want them to get replaced. Right. But it was more of like, you're going to have to step up. Like, you're not doing as good as you could be doing, right? But long story short, it starts with your marketing. Then it goes into the sales process. From there, now that you've acquired the customer, the client, you then have to fulfill on your operations, yep. right? And so you know, operations, if you have a great product, that's the easy part, right? Because you got great people, you've got a great product, you've got great systems. And so that should be like the kind of coast home. Right. Especially a digital product. Yeah. Like that's, that's the easy part. The mm -hmm. hard part is the marketing for many, like for me, even it's hard because, you know, yeah, I have organic following and stuff, but we got to run paid ads. We got to make a lot of creatives. We got to test what works, what doesn't work. You know, we got to hire more sales guys who are really good. Um, and so, like, I tell people this all the time. Uh, when you're looking at a company and the totem pole of, like, what's the most valuable, I mean, even Grant Cardone said this at his office, the number one most valuable person in a company is the marketer. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense, right? Because if you look at Mr. Beast, he's the marketer. Mm -hmm. He makes money because that guy is a great marketer. Right. You know, he comes up with the ideas. He He's just the visionary. He's great at marketing. Grant Cardone said, like, he spends the majority of his time pushing traffic, making videos, marketing. Gary Vee, all he does is market all day. Like, that is the top-level role, and that person makes the big bucks because without them, nobody has a job. Right. Right? From there, all right, the salespeople, we got to close these, these leads that the marketer is bringing in. Right. And so like you'll see a lot of salespeople who make more money than their managers or the COO. Oh, yeah. You've seen it in, in tech. tech. That's a, yeah. Big time. The sales guys make the most money by far. Yeah. And like, you know, I was trying I was telling Justin C on this. I'm like, look, the reality is in business. It doesn't matter what you're selling. We could be selling real estate education. We could be selling tax. We could be selling content empire, whatever. The sales guys are always going to make the most money. Mm -hmm. Like they just their job is that vital. Right. And there's not that many good salespeople who really get it, you know? Yeah. Who can close? Who can close? Truly. So what, what about the, uh, the behavior of your salespeople was changed between the 200 and the 400? What, what, what was changed? Yeah. Like what did you change behaviorally about your salespeople? Um, um, I mean, look, it, it's just, we had a whole culture shift where it was like, Hey, no excuses. Hmm. You got to hit this many calls. You've got to have this kind of closing ratio. And if you're not, we're going to see like, and look, when you're with other salespeople and that's like the norm, you're thinking this is what is normal. Yeah, I'm But then you bring above. some beast in uh -huh. and you're like, oh, this is not normal. Like this guy, mm -hmm. he's closing good. Right. He closes twice as many as I do. What do you think is going to happen? He's going to start getting all the leads. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, salespeople are really like, you know, it's just like in baseball, the closers, the yeah. closers get paid big money. <laughs> Because to shut the door, man, when you're in the ninth inning, what's the most important inning of the game? It's the ninth inning. Yep. <laughs> you know, that's why they get the big bucks. The seventh inning guy doesn't get the ninth inning money. Right. Right. 
So, you know, I think any business, it starts with solving a problem, identifying who it is you're marketing to, coming up with a great marketing plan to reach that person, coming up with a good sales process to make sure they buy. And once they buy, fulfilling mm. at a high level. And, um, you know, fulfillment's important for so many reasons of that. The reason Content Empire even has success is because so many people are cross-buying from other companies. They're like, oh, dude, you guys kill it at this company and that company I'm a part of. Content Empire's going to be great. Mm -hmm. So it's not even like the sales process kind of goes out the window yeah, at right. that point. They're just like, I'm in. Like, just let's go. Right. But the new people definitely have to be sold and, you know, all that stuff. But um, well, so literally, that that's all business is. That's You take any business, the marketing's going to be at the top. Sales are going to be number two. Operations is going to be number three. Right. Well, and, and I feel like a lot of it, in order to, just talking about Content Empire, in order to buy into something like that, you really have to believe in your business and your demand for your business, that first stage that you just mentioned. But I imagine with Content Empire, there's going to be a lot of folks that still need a lot of, like myself, like we talked about, Justin, just you still need a, a process to dilute or to take that big box, the empty box that you mentioned, and start filling out some of the details of the idea until you have that feeling of, oh, this is the idea. Right, right, right. Yeah, so it, is that, is that kind of like phase one there? Yeah, I would say, man, I don't think your idea, your first idea is ever going to be ever. the company. I, right. I've yet to have one idea where it turned out that that was how we made mm -hmm. money. You know, Future Flipper, I first started out, it was a book. Then it was a course. And I was like, I'll just sell courses. I don't want to coach. Like, yeah, right. courses are on autopilot. And mm -hmm. I realized people don't want that. They want coaching, right? Mm -hmm. And so over years, Future Flipper even evolved into what it is today, right? Tykes evolve. They all evolve. You know, all my businesses are going through different transitions to get to where they're at today. The Wealthy Way is now a podcast and a book. And like, they all evolve. And, you know, what makes the money in the beginning probably isn't what's going to make a money a year or two from mm -hmm. now. And I was actually telling Justin this too. I was like, hey guys, here's like the initial plan for Content Empire. This is like what I see us doing and everything else, but we're going to see. Right. Like, mm -hmm. who knows where this is going to, what rabbit holes it's going to lead to. We don't know. We have the initial plan and all we can do is test and see. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a good example too. You know, um, people bought at the event for the price that we had at the launch, Right. And then yesterday we launched and I said, let me try. And I told Sian and Justin this. I said, let, I'm going to try putting the price up there. And they go, people will buy it at that price. Like people buy stuff at that price all the time. And I go, yeah, but they always need to talk to a salesperson to mm. buy it at that price. They, very few people will pay thousands of dollars just with a click. Totally. Right. But yep. I go, let's just test it because I'm all about testing things. Yeah. We test it. No one buys. And the problem is we also don't get a lead because they see it. They automatically say, uh, oh, I don't want to do this. It's too expensive, whatever. And so you don't even know who was interested. Right. And mm. so within a couple of hours, I said, cut it off. Mm. They have to apply and talk to somebody. And that's all comes back down to how good of you are, are you of a marketer? And do you understand the sales funnel? Because if I let that happen for a week, it potentially costs hundreds of thousands in people who would have bought had they went through the full process. Right. And a big thing is understanding that you can only test for a period, a short period of time at the initial start of it. Like he said, if he would have left it up there, you know what I mean? You kind of, you almost can blow it by right. doing something like that. Yeah, and people would have still bought. <clears throat> it would have got sales. Yeah, it would have got something. But it, it would be significantly less than if you just did it the right way. Right. But in my mind, I'm like, well... I think this product is so freaking good. If you don't buy it, you're dumb. Yeah. That, that was in my mind. Yeah. But I understand, like, the stuff we sell is a lot of money. You know, people need to be, you know, really give an informed decision. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so um, long story short, for those of you who are interested, you cannot buy it directly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can go to contentempire.io and get the full scope of what exactly we're doing, why it's important if you're an entrepreneur. I, 1,000% believe every single one of you should buy this. I don't think Future Flipper is for everybody. I don't think True Books is for everybody. I mm. say that all the time. I'm like, look, if you're doing this, you're not a fit for True Books. You know, if you're not a credit investor, you're not a fit for Panetta Cap. Like, I disqualify people all the time. Mm -hmm. With Content Empire, if you're an entrepreneur, I don't see anybody who's disqualified. I'm like, yep. 
you have to do it. There's no other way around it. Well, and like you just said, even with Content Empire, all of your businesses, it's trial and error. You're tweaking things as you go. All of your entrepreneurs out there are going to have the same thing with their business. It's going to be growing, blah, blah, blah. The one constant that I think we can all agree on now is that consistent content with high value to your audience is a piece that's not changing. It ain't changing. That's no. going to be a pillar of your business, no matter how it changes, no matter where it and goes. And the thing is, it doesn't have to be you making the content, but somebody in your business has to be making that right. content. Well, and that's what's appealing for me because, like I said, as a musician and also a tech sales guy uh, with a family, it's like I need to understand quickly how to build a team of people that are going to be able to carry on these responsibilities that I need to be able to just create uh, the, the art. And so, I mean, so many people out here that do consider time their most valuable asset aren't going to be the editors for the same reason that you didn't want to start an editing company mm -hmm. because it's, you know, it's a high touch. It's a labor job. Labor right? job, right. The money is made in the knowledge and the, mm -hmm. the leverage, right? right? And yeah. if you can set each one of these entrepreneurs on top of this well-oiled machine, that, that creates gives them content. massive leverage. Yeah, then that machine, I've seen it with you. First, I was like, dude, how do you pay for all these people to do this content for you? And then I'm like, oh, it pays for itself immediately. Well, and I wouldn't say immediately because it didn't, mm. right? Like, and this is the thing I always tell even these guys too, is like, it's not a one or the other thing, right? It's like, they both need each other, right? I could not afford to pay these guys what I pay them for content without having these other businesses as a way to monetize the content, right? right? I can't go drop all this money making videos if it don't make me any money, right? right? If I don't have a way for it to give me like a big return too. Yeah. Because I don't spend 40,000 to go make 40,000, right? Right. So like they both go hand in hand. Like they don't have a job if these guys don't, if I don't have this business, but they ain't getting leads if these guys ain't making the videos. Right. So it's like this mutually beneficial thing that has to happen. And it's the, it goes back to the same thing of marketing and sales, right. right? Like, you know, this is the marketing side with the content. The sales side is with the business. Yep. And like marketing is first. That's what happens. We got to make good videos. That then leads to sales. Right. And Content Empire is going to touch on both arms of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sick. Yep. Cool. Well. I just bought in. There we go. On the Blake, spot. Blake's Sold. In. Sold right in. there. Like sold. He doesn't even know the price. He's yeah, in. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> cool. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope it gives you some value on how to start a business. And I would love to see you in Content Empire. We'll catch you on the next episode. Peace. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Wealthy Way podcast. If you got value, there are two things I want you to do. The first is go to wealthyway.com and get access to all of our free stuff. You can download our courses for free. You can use the Wealthy Way Planner for free. You can subscribe to our newsletter. All of it's free. It is such amazing value. I want you to go take advantage of that. The second thing is if you could go to Apple and leave a five-star review, or if you're watching this on YouTube and subscribe, that would be amazing. It would mean a lot to me. In fact, if you leave a review, I might just shout you out on the next episode because we are reading those. So definitely check it out. And thanks for watching.